Um, during our time that we're going to be uh, with one another to get today, we're going to be sharing a lot of different information with you. And uh, I'm going to kick us off. So uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Shannon Ganong. I am the Director of Community Collaboration for Together for Arizona. And Together for Arizona is formally, some of you may have heard of it, uh, but formally referred to as the Collective Impact for Child uh, excuse me, for children and family well-being. It's a mouthful. And uh, in this last year, uh, we rebranded and now we're referred to as Together for Arizona. But what we do is we bring together institutions, practitioners, decision makers, community members with lived experience to analyze data, to identify strategies, and to launch solutions that are designed to increase the protective factors that are most directly linked to lower instances of child abuse and neglect. So our vision at Together for Arizona is that all children and families in Arizona are safe, stable, and flourishing. And one of the improvement strategies that has come out of the work of Together for Arizona is our Family Navigation Action Team. And this Family Navigation Action Team in the context of our work. helps families to achieve their safety and self-sustainability goals by supporting self-advocacy, education, and access to needed supports. So uh, we have two improvement strategies underneath that umbrella. And one of them uh, is our Strong Family Toolkit, uh, which we'd be happy to share some information with you, uh, maybe by email. But the improvement strategy that we're here to talk about is um, the Family Support Chatbot. And as you can see on your screen, uh, this is uh, just a handful of the different collaborators, uh, individuals and um, organizations and agencies that have been a part of putting together this chatbot. And Dave's going to share in just a few minutes a little bit about the history uh, behind how this chatbot came to be. Uh, but thank you uh, explicitly to Valley Leadership, to Valley Leadership Impact Maker, to 211, and to the Family Involvement Center, because they all have had just a critical um, part to play in this chatbot coming to fruition. So here's the docket of the individuals that you're going to be hearing from today. I already had an opportunity to introduce myself. I'm Shannon. Uh, you're also going to hear from Dave Brown, uh, Lindsay Shine, and Stephen Fawn. Uh, if you guys want to just take yourself off mute for just a moment and introduce yourself to the group, that would be great. Dave, you want to go first? Um, so excited to see everybody here uh, to talk about this new technology. It's, um, I know, been all over the, the news and media. Um, but to have something like this in the child well-being, family well-being space uh, is super exciting. So I'm excited to tell you a little bit more about it and you know, excited to see so many of you uh, looking to learn more. Thanks, Dave. Lindsay, could you introduce yourself, please? Hey there, everybody. My name is Lindsay Shine. And I'm with the Family Involvement Center. Um, and within my role, you know, I'm someone who's navigated resources myself. Um, and I also support families who are involved with um, child welfare. And Lindsay has also been a very active contributor in this work group in helping again to bring this to fruition. So thanks, Lindsay. Yeah. And Stephen, would you mind introducing yourself? Afternoon, everyone. I'm Stephen Kwan. I'm part of the Valley Leadership Impact Maker organization. And um, I've been with the bot group for the better part of three years now since uh, really we came up with it and have been help building it technically and, and getting it ready to bring across the finish line. So thanks for being here today. Thank you. And Paige, I'm going to call you out, even though you're not going to be speaking explicitly. Paige has also had an extensive hand in being a part of the project management side of the chatbot, and she's our co-captain today, um, kind of more on the tech side of things, if you just want to say hi, Paige. Hi, everyone. Yeah, my name is Paige Lucy, and uh, I'm the Director of Marketing at Valley Leadership, and I also help project manage the chatbot. So thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thanks, Paige. All right, so moving right along, here's what we're going to be covering today, guys. What you're going to be learning is why we built the chatbot and how it supports Arizona families. I'm assuming that's probably why many of you are on the call. We also want to share with you how the chatbot 
uh, how to use the chatbot and how to get started incorporating it into your platform or into your agency and organization. So what we hope you'll do as a result of our time together is to be able to follow the implementation guide that we've put together um, and the instructions that we have to add the chatbot to your website. We'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like. Uh, and we, what we would also love for you to do is to be able to direct the clients, uh, the community partners, and other potential users to the chatbot. Uh, and then lastly, provide us with any feedback that would make the experience better. And I promise you we'll have a roadmap or a path of how you can provide that feedback to us uh, towards the end of our call today. So I am going to turn it over to Dave, who's going to share with you a little bit of history about the chatbot. Dave? Yes, thank you, Shannon. Um, excited again to see so many people from different spaces uh, within the community and serving the community. Um, lots is needed um, in Arizona to make sure families get what they need. Um, most of us, I think, when we have a need, we call a family, we call a friend. Um, this is an opportunity with the chatbot to call um, a technology that helps someone get what they need so that that stress level decreases, doesn't increase, so that um, ability to help family members um, is more readily available and quicker, um, and just generally um, keep families strong and thriving. So the, the end goal of this uh, technology is, is that, let's keep families strong. Um, we looked at this as a team a few years ago and said, how do families currently do that? So the first thing we did, like anybody does, is you just go into Google. Um, you know, I, I need a food box. Uh, I may miss rent. Um, I need uh, clothes for my child when they go to school the next day. And we actually did that and ran some iterations of, of what Google tells us. And as you can imagine, um, it was overwhelming. We actually had someone build a staff uh, build a PowerPoint deck and a slide that shows here's all the different options of of how that that need could be met, and so it was confusing, uh, it was noisy. Um, we have a great resource in something like two one one, and that can provide those things. And a number of practitioners, many of you, uh, who provide that thing. But we thought, is there a way for technology to at least skim some of those easier calls, some of those easier requests, uh, to make things uh, quicker? Uh, and so one of the, the first things we did is enlist um, uh, people with lived experience and uh, people closest to the work. And we're going to hear from Lindsay in a second about that to say, hey, you know, chatbot phone, does that ring a bell? Is that something that you might think could be helpful? And one of the stories I always tell about how the, re the reduction in stress can happen is one person with lived experience said, you know, 211 is great, but I got a call. I usually call on the bus ride to work. If I can't finish the call, I got to go into work and I got to call back, spend another 20 minutes. It'd be great if I could just text somebody, hey, I need, I'm short on groceries this week. Uh, can I pick up a food box on the way home from work? And the bot can tell me through text or through a website that, yeah, here's your closest food box. Here's their hours of operations. And I can pick something up on the way home from work. To me, and I think to others on the team, it felt like, yeah, that uh, overwhelming barrage of different resources, different phone numbers to call, which one does which let technology screw around with all that and just tell me where I can go pick up my food box. So that's what the bot has done. Um, and for the last six months or so, as Shannon, you want to go to the next slide, uh, it's been doing that. So we soft launched this in July and um, all over the state, you can see already um, people who have used it and it's meant to be uh, statewide. So I know there are practitioners and others from uh, all parts of the state here today. Um, it's meant to be statewide, used statewide, it was developed with that in mind so that anyone, um, I believe within 50 miles of a resource can find that resource. It gets a little trickier and a little more challenging out in rural Arizona. But for right now, uh, using the 2 on one database uh, with some additions, we can find people, uh, people, families can find three things right now, food, clothing, and phone. And those were the three areas we identified first as critical needs, uh, ones that came up over and over again with lived experience, and ones that we wanted to just start the technology um, process with, which Stephen will talk about a little more when it comes to how can a family um, use a chat bot to get what they need. And in addition to that, in a little more to talk about that with, uh, with Lindsay, 
is how the family can find that resource, but then also all of you practitioners who I know have, you know, your post-its, your lists, your Excel sheets of all the different ways to call and find out where you can get a service for someone. Uh, we, we had you in mind as well. So uh, if we look at the next slide, we'll have Lindsay talk a little bit about um, some of the key features of the bot and why we have those features. Um, and Lindsay, if you wouldn't mind, give us a little more of, of your self-introduction and background um, and provide that kind of uh, commentary and perspective when it comes to uh, these four bullets, at least to start with, um, and then uh, we can go from there. Sure. Thanks, Dave. Um, hi, everyone. Once again, my name is Lindsay. Um, so I'm a person, I've spent the last six years um, supporting other families um, while they navigate, you know, themselves being separated from their children. Um, so, you know, I usually have tried my best during that time to stay up to date with resources. Um, I came into the job um, because, you know, I made a lot of mistakes myself and, you know, got that lived experience um, and try to use that to help other families who are trying to get a leg up. Um, so we all know that uh, poverty is a risk factor for neglect and it's not a crime. Um, however, it does contribute or is the cause of approximately 70% of removals nationally. Um, and it's the role of the community to take care of those families who are experiencing risk factors, which is where everybody who's here today, you know, this is where you all come in. By adding the chat bot to your webpage, you can help connect a family to those resources to help with some of those basic needs. Um, some of the reasons a person might find it appealing if they're already stressed out is that it's anonymous. Um, you know, you can access a resource discreetly. Um, it's going to be available outside of those typical business hours, um, so around the clock. Um, it has a very simple interface that's straightforward. They have an opportunity to preview it um, before they go there in person or even call to check it out. Um, you know, it does give them the contact information for it, and it shows them a map of where it's at. Uh, for people who are more visual, like for me, I'm the kind of person, like if someone tells me it verbally, I just, I can't remember it. But if I see it in writing, the chances of me remembering it just, you know, absolutely skyrocket. Um, it allows the person to screenshot it. They can share it. Um, it allows the quick access without having to wait on hold, uh, provides a person with local information. Um, and it also helps them not have to explain their situation to multiple people if they're calling in and looking for something. Um, I can say like myself as someone who's tried to navigate resources, it can just be absolutely soul crushing to get handed a list and none of them work or none of them do what the list says that they do. Um, and, you know, you can get on the web pages and, you know, go down rabbit holes with websites. Um, and, you know, typically a person has to be a phone warrior to really find what they're looking for. So hopefully, you know, this just helps really mainstream some of that legwork that they're already going to be doing. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, all of these four bullets were reaffirmed um, and and with input from people with lived experience. So again, the idea that the chatbot helps a family in need has been paramount since day one, both on the practitioners, those who serve families, as well as tech, which we're going to get to Stephen here in a second. Stephen has been adamant. Stephen is a uh, what I affectionately call as the, as the as the nerd of the group, the tech nerd, um, who helped think through how you bring artificial intelligence into serving families. But that was the end goal: is is we had to be able to um, ensure uh, what what Lindsay just talked about that the family gets what they need. Otherwise, this is kind of you know what's the point of it? So, um, lived experience helped us think through exactly what that looks like, how it happens on the back end of the bot, um, you know, is behind the scenes, but really thinking through all the ways someone could ask a question, all the ways they could understand or interpret a response from the bot, all those sorts of things went into um, the artificial intelligence behind the bot, um, which is all super exciting. Um, and we're, we're lucky to have someone like Steven who was able to help us, um, one, uh, not be overwhelmed by that, uh, and two, uh, make it look pretty easy, um, given um, how smart he is. So Stephen, walk us through how the bot actually works. Thanks, Dave. Um, and and Dave mentioned AI and, and technology and all that kind of stuff. Uh, 
something we're not going to go too in depth about that. So if that scares you, don't worry about it. And also, the way that the bot has been built is not using any of the like scary end of the world kind of stuff. It's it's pretty tightly constrained, and we've made sure that the bot has been trained and tested to take a question and turn it into an answer. And so that's really how the bot works. It's it's built conversationally. It was made in mind to be easy for an end user. And as we mentioned, to, to keep it anonymous until somebody is ready to share more information if they'd like. So if somebody says, I'm in need, basically the chatbot says, great, let me help you with it. So really a couple of very easy steps for somebody to use the chatbot. The first step is just go to the website or text the bot. We have a slide a little bit later with the phone number, so y'all can see that, uh, save it if you'd rather do it. But basically, use a computer, use a mobile device, or text it with your phone. So you've got multiple ways that people can interact with the chat bot, whatever they're doing. As Dave mentioned, if you don't have cell phone service, but you still have uh, the ability to text, you can text the bot whenever you want, day or night, doesn't matter. If you'd rather use your computer at work, that works too. Um, and the great thing for practitioners is if you want to add this to your website or if you have a website where you suggest that this be added, it is really, really simple. A couple of clicks of a button, a couple of pastes of a line of code, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about updating that. So that's all great. Step one, log in, launch, or not even log in, launch the chat bot, start the conversation, you're good to go. The second step is then you start having a conversation with the chatbot. You let it know what its need, what your needs are, and it will guide the conversation to hopefully giving somebody a resource. You can ask the chatbot questions directly or say what you need directly, but also through our experience, through kind of the, the boundaries that we've helped put in place on this one, we'll also prompt people for specific resources. You can see in the picture there, we've got those five categories within the food resources to make it quicker for somebody if they didn't want to type something out or if they weren't exactly sure what really category. Hello. They, hello. If they weren't sure which category they fell in. Uh, and we'll take a look at an example. I'll do a live demo here in a minute. Um, so that's step two. Step Stephen, three. can I just throw out oh, there, you haven't mentioned it yet, but it's available in English and Spanish both. Great call. Out. Yes, thank you, Shannon. Unlike me, the chatbot speaks multiple languages, um, English and Spanish, and, and they both work quite well. So step three is after you've given, after a user or you have given the chatbot enough information, the chatbot will spit out a list of resources for you. As Dave mentioned, it can go up to 50 miles away if you're in more of a rural area, but if you live more in an urban area, it may not have to go nearly that far out. But basically, this is the point where uh, we can say, or a user can say, I'm only comfortable giving you my zip code. We don't ask for a name or anything like that. They plug in their zip code. The chatbot will take a list, uh, take and return a list of vetted resources. Our partners at 211 Solari have been great and have a, a really trusted list that we've based this chatbot off of. And then you can see your results. Again, if you're on a phone using the chatbot, this is what it looks like on the right here. And you can scroll through your answers if you're on, if you're texting. It looks a little bit different, but you still get the same info. You'll see uh, potentially five different little blurbs that, that tells you where you want to go. Uh, so that's the high level of it. Again, this is the slide that has the phone number. So if you wanted to text the bot instead of going to a website, you text 877-558-2261 and say family to give it a go. Uh, there's a few other words that you can use, but family is the best one to get it launched. And, and if you use the wrong word, if somebody uses the wrong word, don't worry. It'll prompt you, hey, I didn't recognize that. Please say whatever it may be. So, all right. From here, thank you, Shannon, for posting that in the chat. From here, I will take the wheel and we will try this out together. All right. Let's give this a whirl. 
Very good. So this is the Together for Arizona website. If you've not visited, it is a wonderful website. Please, everybody, go and see it. And on this specific page for the chatbot and in your website, should you choose to be a part of the club, you can see on the bottom left, this little dot is the chatbot. So it doesn't take up an entire web website's worth of real estate. So if you're thinking, oh, I'd love to add this to my homepage, but I'm worried about it blocking out the whole screen, it certainly is not. It's just a little bit. So to get it started, you click on the button and it pops up. It's thinking it's going to say hi my chatbot, uh, you can, it first prompts you for your language. I'll speak in English. So we'll go through that. And then you get into it. Again, we've talked about there are three categories that the chatbot really is laser focused on food, clothing, and cell phone assistance. I'm a little bit hungry. So we'll talk about food assistance and see what options come back here. And again, if you did not want to choose from one of the categories, you could type in something, whatever you want, and the chatbot, again, if it falls in one of those categories that we support, the chatbot will direct somebody into that conversational flow. And if it does not recognize it as being one of the categories that we support, it will say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. And here's the phone number to reach 211, or here's the website to get to 211. Um, there we go. So it's coming back and saying, great, You've said food. Here's some more questions so I can make sure that I get you the right resources. Um, let's say that we want to do a hot meal center. And then this one, it's going to say, okay, great. Thank you for that. Let's get some more information to get you to the right location, which is where somebody would have to put in their zip code. Uh, as we talked about before, trying to keep this as anonymous as possible for as long as possible, we first ask for a zip code and return resources based on that zip code. If those resources aren't correct, the user has the ability to say, no, that's not right. I want to get more specific. And at that point, they can put in a specific address, home, work, kids' school, whatever it may be, and it will spit something out. So I'm going to give my home address zip code, and we will see the resources that come back. So as you can see, it gives a, a location here. It's the name of the resource, and then it's the address. And if you click on the little buttons here, it will, ooh, it's asking another question. We'll get to that in a second. If you click on the little buttons on the side here, it will take you to the carousel so that you can see all of the resources that it provides. Um, if you want to go forward with it, you can click more details or take a screenshot or just punch that into your uh, Maps app. Whatever you want to do, these are the resources it has returned to you based on the zip code that was put in. As we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, it gives you the option to say, actually, these aren't good enough for me. And you can provide a specific address for the bot to key into. Or if that doesn't work, it will increase the search distance to try to give you more and more. Uh, while that loads, jumping ahead for a second, the bot actually loves feedback, much like we on, on this Collective Impact team do. Uh, and so we've tried to build feedback loops in that give people the ability to tell us how things are going. If they're loving the experience, that's great. We want to know about it. If the experience isn't great, well, that we don't love that, but we also want to hear about it as well. We we collect data again; it's anonymous, but we will be able to see how the ratings come back in and use that to make the bot better over time. If it's a bunch of one star reviews, well, then we can dive into the details and see were people getting stuck? Was it general slowness? Was it the it would, the bot was down or something like that? Was it the the color that was green? But long story short, we've given us the ability to get feedback from actual users, to kind of mine the data a little bit to determine where we want to go from there. Um, well, this thing is bouncing around and I don't want to take everybody's time. It's probably with my internet connection, but trust me, it allows you to put in a more specific address to get better resources based on what's been given above. And the other thing is, should anybody be like, okay, great, I've asked about food, but I also want to know about clothing, you can go back to basically the main menu, click a button, it'll relaunch the chat bot and you can start the conversation all over again.
Thank you, Stephen. Um, saw some questions in the chat. Uh, continue with putting throwing questions in the chat. We'll answer them as we get to them um, at the end here. We'll have a little time for Q&A, and then Paige can also reply as we go through it. Um, so this is meant and kind of similar to the question that, that Patty put. Um, the Facebook page, yes, we're looking into that. There are some school districts that are actually interested. They're also talking about how they mostly talk to their parents through the school's Facebook page, not necessarily the website. Uh, Shannon also showed you how you can text family to get direct access to the bot. Um, the togetherforaz.org backslash chatbot is one website that this is on. It's also on the Impact Maker website. The goal is that it's all uh, on many websites. So it's 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 applied and put on, which I'm going to get to in a second, anybody's website, so that it's not just you got to go to one specific domain in order to access the chatbot. Um, it can be on your own website. Uh, it can be on um, a partner that you you regularly go to's website, um, so that it's it's as available and out there as possible. So we're going to talk a little bit about how that happens. This is the three click um, uh, steps that Stephen talked about uh, that just get it going on your website. Shannon, you want to go to the next slide? Um, pretty simple. Uh, there's a snippet, which is basically a, a, a string of code that you will put on your website and then uh, voila, you're, the chatbot's on your website. So again, the goal here isn't that this just lives in one website. It can live anywhere on anyone's website. There is a form um, and a quick agreement you have to uh, sign so that we know that uh, you have it on your website. Um, but then you can go straight from that as a practitioner. You can say, hey, visit our website, helpingpeople.com. You'll always have the bot there. You can refer people directly to your own website uh, to find, again, the food, clothing, or cell phone assistance. Um, we're also looking to uh, constant feedback. This thing has been tested 9 million different ways. So being able to uh, constantly improve that, as I mentioned before, we want any family to be able to get what they need to get. We want as many five-star ratings as possible because then we know a family is served. If if we can't do that, then there's nearly no point. Um, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Shannon, there. So this is how it looks when it's on your website. Again, this is the T for AZ family support chatbot website or web page. You can see the chatbot little bug there in the corner collapsed, and then you can see it opened. So again, fairly simple. You've seen this on Amazon site, Cox Cable, your phone company, SRP everywhere. Uh, this can live on different websites. So if you're working with families regularly, it's probably easiest just to throw it on your own website so that families know and you can refer them to um, all the work that you're doing um, within your own organization. Next slide, we'll show you what it looks like, or I guess we won't, nope, there we go, uh, what it looks like on the uh, phone from a website. So that's on the left there is the VL Impact Maker website. You can see it there living. Um, and then when it's open, it fills the screen. So again, pretty standard what this looks like from most uh, phones. And then the last slide here, uh, when you text, looks just like a text. When you do anything else, again, text family to 877-558-2261. The welcome message appears, uh, and then you're off and running in either English or Spanish. And then lastly, um, how you make it happen. So there's a Google form that you'll request, um, that we request us information, basic information for. Uh, this, this gets you started on your way to putting it on your website. And again, I reiterate and encourage everyone here. I'm seeing people from uh, cities and towns. I'm seeing practitioners, state agencies, places across Arizona. The more this is out there, the better, because the more families don't have to search um, for this, the easier. We are going to be marketing this in the next uh, couple of uh, quarters here in 2024. You're our first line when it comes to getting the word out. So uh, you have your long sheet of various resources. One, add it, put it on the website. Uh, please forward anybody or any organization you think this could be uh, an easy placement on their website or that gets lots of traffic. Uh, we're going to start doing other marketing activities to get this spread far and wide. Um, interesting and exciting to our schools. Uh, there's a couple of school districts who are interested. We feel like that's another very captive audience to families. Um, so we're going to start reaching out to more more school districts. If you happen to be a school district and are interested, please let us know. 
Um, but you can start by uh, the Google request form, which we can put in. I think we can put the link into the chat so you can get going clicking on that. There's a partner hosting agreement, pretty boilerplate stuff when it comes to having that little bug, uh, little snippet thing on your on your website. We have a whole implementation guide, so it gives you more of the do's and don'ts, FAQs, um, and you'll be all set. So again, I hope everyone can throw it up there and start promoting it. We'd appreciate it. Questions, comments, thoughts? We've got a handful of questions in the chat, but I'm going to defer to Paige as to what ones we still need to answer, because I know you and Stephen were tackling those. And Absolutely. So, Kenneth, um, in terms of your question about the referral, our data partner is uh, 2 on one in Solari. So our data that's being pulled in reflects what is uh, in the 2 on one database. And we have worked with them to basically create filters that will filter out the resources based on uh, the filters that are checked through the intake form, through the chatbot experience. So um, is that what you're talking about in terms of a referral? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. That's exactly what I was talking about. Just to know where the referrals yep. are coming from. So it also lets us know as an organization, if we were to tap into the chat bot as a resource, okay, yep. we can see that there are people who are, you know, not necessarily talking to us. They're using resources that we have available. Let's make sure that we're following up with them. So I okay. just on that aspect of being able to follow up with the resources. So thank you for that. Totally. And then uh, Maya sort of in the same vein, we have been working with them as we've gone through this and we've done testing with lived experience individuals. They have brought to our attention that there are resources missing from the database. And fortunately, um, we're able to work with them directly to get those resources added. So um, if there are resources that are clearly missing in any of these categories or as you use the chatbot, realize you know, a lot of our community partners, they like to use this current resource um, and it's not in the database. We're able to get that added very, very quickly. So, um, which is a great benefit of working with 2-on-1 so closely. Do you have a good contact page for 2-on-1 to be able to provide that data to, or can I like send stuff to you potentially? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I do know that they have a form, um, but then you can also send it to me. So why don't we connect after and we can okay. figure out yeah. what the best solution is. Perfect. Thanks Paige. Of course. All right. Let me take a look. And I'll just add to um, if as you're going through and playing and testing with the chatbot and you have any specific feedback for us uh, or things that we could do to improve or whatever the case may be, I've put um, our uh, Together for Arizona email in the email uh, chat, uh, together for AZ at azcouncil.com. Uh, so you can send those. Um, points of feedback to that specific email. And also in the chat, I put the uh, Google form. So if you are interested in uh, looking into hosting the chatbot on your website, uh, you or the appropriate person at your agency or organization would complete that form and submit it to us. And then we'll follow up with you on what those next steps look like. Uh, like Dave said, there is an agreement that we would ask you to sign or your agency to sign. Um, and then we would provide you with uh, the coding, the snippet of coding uh, that you could embed on your website. Thanks, Shannon. Um, and, also and then uh, Jacqueline, I just want to jump in here. Um, it is currently live, uh, as Lindsay just added there. And um, currently, it's live on the Together for Arizona website, as well as Valley Leadership's Impact Maker website, and then um, through our SMS channel. Uh, and then in terms of when it's ready to be added to other websites, we are at that point now. So we are in the process of getting it implemented on um, a local school district and a couple of other partner websites. So we're very excited to get it out to the community. And Jacqueline, just to um, clarify, this is an Arizona specific tool or chatbot. So this is only accessible um, and providing resources to those that are in Arizona. But who knows? Maybe in the future, it'll be in more states. I already asked, I'm not sure, but um, is there a plan to, um, obviously the point is to have ease of use, really simple, um, but is there a plan to add additional uh, resource types? Yes, we are incredibly excited about the opportunities to add different um, areas of resources. So we are in lots of conversations with community partners to figure out 
what is the next biggest area of need and where can we be the most helpful? So it's an, like housing, for example, is a huge area of need, um, but is a chatbot the best way to address housing as a whole? Probably not, but how can we really refine that to figure out where we can be most impactful with the chatbot? And then who are the partners that can help us build out those resources? And I'll add that the chatbot is not meant to be a cure-all for all needs. Um, it, again, intentionally uh, built for that skimming the top uh, two and one. So if the chatbot can't get you what you need, you don't. It's not working for you, and you need more help. It goes right. You can go right to two and one, and two and one will start helping you uh, through your needs. Uh, we've already started to explore housing. H housing can immediately go very deep and have all sorts of different um, nuance and, comp and complexity. But if there is a space within housing that can be again uh, skimmable where someone can get what they need rather quickly and easily. We are going to look at, into those things um, as well as other services. There's all sorts of things happening right now um, where families can access different things from different places. And if the bot can do that on the back end um, pretty seamlessly, we're going to try and push those out next. Also looking at um, with through our partners, our academic partners, our practitioner partners, uh, where there are um, high need. We know childcare with all of the ARPA money soon to be running out or running out, that that's going to be a huge one. So we're starting to look at how the bot can uh, tackle those areas in its best use as possible, knowing that it, it may not be able to solve all things. I appreciate you mentioning childcare as well. I was going to mention that. So thanks for that uh, thorough mm -hmm. response. All right, I see one more question in the chat. Any plans for additional languages other than English and Spanish in the future? Um, I would answer that question with, a, we don't know, maybe in the future. Um, it was really important for us, at least in this first version, uh, with launching uh, these specific types of uh, resources with food, clothing, and um, phone to make sure that it was successful in both English and Spanish. Um, but I'm sure that that'll be a discussion as we look to uh, the next iteration or the next version of the chatbot, uh, whether we should uh, increase the, um, the languages offered. So thank you for the feedback on that. Just one quick other question. If I want to share, um, you know, this with a partner agency that I think might be interested in hosting the chatbot on their website, for instance. Um, do you all have like a quick, you know, blurb or something to share with them? We do. Yeah. And Paige, so Paige, go ahead. We will be following up today with um, the recording for the webinar. So if you do want to send this along, because I know it is a little more in depth. Um, that is going to be a great resource. We also have a one pager that's intended specifically for partners for hosting. So um, Shannon, let's make a note and we can include that one pager in the email follow-up as well. Um, there are also, there's also like a marketing guide that we have for promoting it both to individuals um, who will be the live, uh, the live experience users of the platform as well as partners. So um, we have a variety of different resources depending on who you're reaching out to. Thanks. Of course. Great question. All right. Uh, there's one more question in the chat, it looks like. Uh, is the chat chatbot program working with That's a great question, Justine. Sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, yeah, so we have been chatting with them. Uh, we see there's yeah. so many parallels in the work that's being done with the different platforms. Um, and so that those conversations are being had and we do see the potential there. So hopefully uh, next webinar, I can say that, yes, we are definitely working with them. Yeah, we've we've had conversations with the closed loop is is the chatbot you know the front door to that broader system. One key difference uh, and point of discussion going forward is that the chatbot currently is anonymous, which uh, uh, lived experience said they want an an anonymity. They don't want DCS to know something. They don't want parole officer. They 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 just want to be able to find what they need and not have to uh, be part of something. Um, there are. Uh, advantages and disadvantages to being anonymous. When you look at the closed loop referral um, and being able to sink in and, and have your whole um, history known can also be a good thing and a bad thing. So we're we're looking at how those two live together. Um, they've been on parallel tracks intentionally for the last couple of years to see the progress made on this on the closed loop referral and the practitioner sign up. Um, but ultimately, yes, not only um, with user experience, um, but also 
uh, database. There's going to be, you know, two on one Solari database. Closed Loop's going to have a database. There's a couple other databases. How do we get everything working in one in one fashion so that families are served uh, best? So that's that's still to be uh, determined. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, as we said, we will be following up with an email with the recording, with the one pager, and the information to get started. So as Shannon mentioned, we have the intake form, and then we have an implementation guide that really walks you through every step. Um, adding the snippet is super quick and easy. So um, if you do run into any issues, though, feel free to reach out. We are happy to help you troubleshoot anything, getting it set up. And Shannon just dropped that form into the chat. So please take a look at that. And we are really excited to continue the conversation. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. It's uh, great to have you all. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. Bye, everyone.